Meet Kim Sterelny. He's a philosopher of science at the Australian National University. And here he is holding up a book, Life Solution by Simon Conway Morris, and he's holding it up because he wrote a review of that book, a very excellent review. Here it is, another view of life. It's all about this debate between convergence and deep homology. He's also written many other books, but here's another one, Dawkins Gould and the Nature of Evolution. So I sat down with him in his office at the Australian National University, and we talked about, are we alone? I'm Kim Sterling. Okay, what do you do? I'm a philosopher of biology. Philosopher of biology, so that, that means you know something about how biology works. Uh, I hope so. Now this Whether I do is for others to judge. Are we alone in the universe? Uh, you mean as sentience or as life forms? I mean... That's, that's two questions. Yeah. Answer, give me two answers. Okay, I think it's pretty... Look, the real answer is we don't know. You know, and we don't know because we don't know how unlikely life is to evolve. I think there's a pretty good chance that there are lots and lots of planets in which life could evolve. Um, if it does get going, uh, um, then my my best guess is that we're not alone. You know, in in terms of intelligence, um, so long as it's got going in a fair range of places. So let me again understand this: if the question is, are we alone? Are we life forms alone? Then. That depends on whether life evolves elsewhere and there. You're not an expert in that and yeah. you don't know. Well, I don't think anyone knows. I don't think anybody. Yeah, I don't think we've got a good model of how life starts. And because we don't have a good model of how life starts, we don't know whether it's an incredible fluke, you know, that we've got it here, um, or relatively likely, you know, if you have a reasonably hospitable planet. Simon Conway Morris wrote a book you have in your hand. I do indeed. Can you show us that book? Uh, okay, Life Solution. Yep. And in 2005, you wrote a review of that. Can you show us your review there? There's, okay. <laughs> there you go, your review. So, one of the, so I'm going to ask you about your review in this book. Yep. In astrobiology, we're trying to answer the question, are we alone? And the contribution that the study of life on Earth can make is the following. If we find that something has evolved independently more than once, that makes it a better candidate for Having, existing elsewhere. Do you agree with that logic? I think it's 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 good logic. Um, there's a bit of a catch, you know, which is exactly how independently is independently. Okay. Um, so, in some sense, if you look at the whole of life on Earth, on the assumption that there's just sort of one origin, none of it's completely independent. You know. You and ye you and yeast aren't completely independent. Me and a mushroom aren't completely independent. Nonetheless, if you can show that something evolves, you know, in the mushroom lineage, and so and something similar evolves in the you know the primate li lineage or the the lineage of animals, or for that matter, you know, the lineage of of plants, you know, you've you've shown a certain degree of independent origin, uh, and that in turn makes it more likely that things like that will have evolved elsewhere in the universe. There's two potential bottlenecks, you know, uh, one is the life bottleneck and, and the other is the, the transition to eukaryotes. Uh, and it seems that once you get eukaryotes, you get multi-celled life because multi-celled life seems to have evolved quite a, quite a few times. How about the connection between how did we get here, figuring out how we got here, how life started and evolved. What's, what's the connection between that understanding, and a lot of people are doing that, and then asking the question, are we alone? Because presumably we are a member of the universe, whether we're somehow generic and life is everywhere or very, very set of measures zero and unique. That's what we're trying to figure out. Is there any way to figure that out by studying what we have here on Earth? Yes, I think. Certainly we can make progress on it, you know, and we've made a bit of progress on it, but there's, there's kind of huge things that we don't know, but which if we, if we could make progress on would, would really help here, you know. Uh, and even though you're, dis, you're disparaging a bit about the concept, you know, you know, uh, you know, things like, you know, major transitions, how likely is it that once you've got, you know, uh, prokaryotic, Type life. How likely is it, you know, uh, that 
you would get, you know, you, you, you eukaryotic, you know, cells. How, you know, likely are eukaryotic cells to, to form, you know, multicellular, you know, uh, uh, organisms and under what, what circumstances? You know, if we, can, if we could get a, a you know, clear empirical handle, you know, uh, on those questions and, of course, the origin of life question, that would, that would give us a lot more ammunition you know, uh, in thinking about the, these elsewhere questions.